We want to welcome the 611 house churches locally, nationally, and internationally. Let's give them a hand. If you're opening a house church or already have, put the heart emoji on our Facebook page so we can be praying for you. And trust me, we're praying for you and we are getting way more blessed from the prayers you're praying over us. I can feel it every day of the week. Uh, use the video and the altar call, have a discussion. So if you get saved this week watching this service, um, you can immediately become an evangelist. You can immediately start testifying. You can either open your home, have some people come over, say, hey, I just got saved watching this video, and use the altar call. Or you can call somebody up and say, hey, I want to come over to your house with my iPad or my cell phone, and I want you to watch this service that I got saved. That's how quickly, that's why hundreds of house churches are opening, because they're just using the service that they got saved in. Um, use the video and the altar call, have a discussion. So um, people give me stuff all the time. This, this might have been John and Deb, but it's uh, Fox, it's uh, uh, Voice of Martyrs map I'm going to show you here in a second. So this is a map of the persecution from the Voice of the Martyrs. Um, and I, I thought, what does the word martyr mean? You know, we kind of, oh yeah, they got martyred for Jesus. Right. Well, what does martyr mean? You know how I like my definitions. Mm -hmm. So martyr means a person who voluntarily suffers death as the penalty of witnessing to and refusing to renounce Jesus. Let me read that one more time. I kind of butchered it. I was still in worship mode and hadn't quite come back down. <laughs> you got to come back down so you can read. So martyr, a person who voluntarily suffers death as the penalty of witnessing to and refusing to renounce Jesus. Dying for Jesus. So I want to show you this map. I don't know how well I'll do no, on, on the... Uh, I got this. Um, it's pretty easy. But this is a map that Voice of the Martyrs sent out yeah. to, to show where people are actually <coughs> dying. Um, and when I opened this up and looked at it, I don't know how close I need to get that the camera... But as, cause as right I there. opened this mm -hmm. up and I looked at it today in my office, I looked at this and the Lord says, Randy, you guys have opened house churches in every single nation on this map. Wow. Awesome. Wow. Every single nation. <laughs> from, from this room, in Chilliquin, Oregon, every single nation a house church is opened from this camera turning on on Saturday night. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's pretty humbling. But little as much, and I, I, I loved how they had the picture of the little girl and their mom and their home, it's just dirt floor. You know, both of their feet are filthy as we would consider. But this is just the reality of where these people live. Roof over your head, change in your pocket, food in your cupboard. Yeah. You're in the top 5% of the wealthiest people in the world. This picture that I just showed you, most of that's the 1040 window. There's about 4 billion people in that uh, window of landmass, 87% of the 4 billion make less than $250 a year per family. I didn't say month. I didn't say per person. 
they make less than $250 a year per family. <clears throat> so what's so awesome is God takes this message from here, supernaturally transports it through technology, and just cuts through all of that. So thank you for praying for us. So I've got one more picture from Voice of Martyrs. So we're opening house churches in all these nations, multiple house churches in some of them, um, from here in Chilliquin, Oregon. And I wrote this little statement, our encouragement, their homes, their people. All we're doing is encouraging, offering salvation. Our encouragement, their homes, their people, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that simple? Amen. Yeah. Isn't that so simple? Yeah. Because you're not trying to get them to go somewhere. You're not trying to get them to come somewhere. You're going to them, and then they're saying, you, we're saying you can do it. Right. Use our service. And they're doing it. So um, I have a picture here of a pastor. His church was set on fire with all the people in it. So as they were worshiping and having church, this is the pastor right up here in the top corner. They went around, set the whole building on fire. It literally burnt to the ground mm -hmm. and the people had to get out. Mm -hmm. This is not 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. This is not 100 years ago. This is happening right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for giving me stuff. <laughs> Somebody else gave me something too, so you might get something next week too. So we just want the, the internet congregation to be praying for us as we go into our fourth year. We're in a town of about 770 people. In the last three years, we've had 176 people, not just from Chilliquin, but the basin, come forward and commit or recommit their lives to Christ. So we want you to be praying with us for the other 600. Why, why not just do the whole town? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's just do the whole town. So we, we want another 600 signatures in that Lamb's Book of Life. You, you, gotta, you gotta get God involved, amen? Amen, that's right. We can do little stuff. We wanna say, hey God, let's, let's get all the other 600. Mm -hmm. So the title of my message tonight, Visitors from Heaven Coming Soon. Visitors from heaven coming soon. You might say, Randy, what's that? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I got your it's attention. True. Visitors from heaven coming soon. So this is what sparked this this week. A Christian this week, the other day, told me, Jesus isn't coming back in my lifetime. I thought, wow, here's a Christian saying, Jesus isn't coming back. He's not coming back in my lifetime. And it was interesting because they wrote, read my book on the life after death testimony and they got offended because I said Jesus was coming back. Now, here's a Christian. Now, I'm, I'm not bashing, okay? I'm just, you got to help me. This little farm boy, it, it bent my brain a little bit. Yeah. Right. But here's a person, not one positive thing about the book, just one negative thing. Jesus is not coming back mm. in my lifetime. Wow. That's, that person might not die for a long time. Yeah. Now, let me teach you something tonight. We're not going to know the day or the hour, but we're going to know when it's warm enough. That's right. And I'm going to help y'all. Yeah. 
y'all come back now. I'm, I'm going to help y'all tonight to give you some scripture to help when the person reads your new book you just written and says, Jesus, I, that was what offended them. Mm -hmm. Was so much scripture. Mm -hmm. That was the second thing. Too much scripture in your books, Randy. Yeah. You gotta back it up. No, no, I know, Jack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I just, I'm not, it, I yeah. just, I gotta breathe. Yeah. Breathe, right? Yeah. Breathe. Breathe. So anyways, <laughs> Christian. Uh, right. The unsaved people I hand it to, they're pumped up, get saved, they're all excited about it. So anyways, you, you figure that one out. So a Christian the other day came up, Jesus isn't coming back in my lifetime. It got me thinking about Bible prophecy, farm boy style, okay? I love it. So we're going biblical prophecy, farm boy style. We can understand. We, we should, I, I agree with you, Mark. Well, we should all understand this. And I wrote after that, simple. So we're going to simply discuss Bible prophecy. The world will not see Jesus till the end of the seven-year tribulation. This is going to help a lot of you out as you're ministering to people. Because even the unsaved, their perception of Jesus coming back is seeing him. Mm -hmm. right. Well, that's at the end of the tribulation. Right. That was a horn. Could have, could have been a trumpet. Could, could, yeah. Boy, it was like I just felt these. I felt like these goosebumps come up on my arm. I that. That's going to tie into tonight. So, whenever you start talking about time frames and things, people get all freaked out. Nobody knows the day or the hour. I agree. Yeah. But that's speaking of the rapture. Right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. See, even a Christian person that talked to me this week didn't even know what they were saying to me when they said Jesus isn't coming back mm. in my lifetime. When it says you'll not know the day or the hour, that's for the, the elect to be caught up in the air. That's right. The rapture. Yeah. So I'm going to explain all that. We're going to explain some things. Okay. Not spleen, spleen. <laughs> <laughs> the world will not see Jesus till the end of the seven year tribulation. Now remember, I said there's going to be some visitors from heaven. Yeah. There's going to be some people from heaven coming down here. We're going to have fun tonight. <laughs> We're going to have fun tonight. The world will not see Jesus till the end of the seven-year tribulation. The body of Christ will be removed at the beginning of the seven-year tribulation. Right. Now nobody knows the day or the hour. But Jesus told us, going to see birth pains, yeah. earthquakes, COVID, uh, famines, yeah. right. all these things going on. And then there's going to come this climax of the birth of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what's going to happen right when that happens? Visitors are coming. I've never taught this before. So, man, I'm, I'm out on the wall wall. <laughs> I'm like Peter, man. I better not look at the waves and stuff. So that's right. So let's keep going here. So and remember, Wednesday night, Pete and Judy's house church here at the community center. They will answer all your questions <laughs> <laughs> because they are Bible. Right, <laughs> these are these are senior pastors, man. Wow. So. <laughs> and, and Pete just said, give him my phone. So now if Pete and Judy, for some reason, go out of town Wednesday, <laughs> then John and Debbie yeah. will answer all of your questions. Not Randy. I, I'm just the mailman. They're the theologians. Now, if John and Debbie go out of town with Pete and Judy, <laughs> then Dan is going to answer all your questions. 
and we will work our way through this room. <laughs> well, not me. I for, was for all of you. Hey, but I, I want you to realize a lot of our house churches don't uh, go over what we teach. And that's fine because I don't want to micromanage if we've got a leader who wants to teach them. But if you guys want to tear this up, be here on Wednesday night, 6 o'clock. Randy won't be here. <laughs> the theologians will. Now listen, if that group gets too big out in the foyer, we got another room. So then Judy can take half, he can take half. You know, in case it gets wild. Amen. What does Randy think he's teaching? Call him. Yeah. All right. All right. I got to get back on the horse here. Got off the road. We will be removed uh, the beginning of the seven year tribulation. Now, why are we being removed? So the apostate church can be judged. Yeah. See, what will happen when the remnant or whatever you want to call the people that lift out of here, you're going to have this apostate church now with no Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. You think it's ugly now. Right. Wait, wait till that's removed. And so you might say, well, Randy, are we getting close to this? Jesus says judgment begins in the house of God. He can't judge the world until he judged the church. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what he said, not what Randy said. So, um, and while we're seeing this, the great turning away from Christ has already started happening. So you know there's this great turning away from Christ. They'll betray and hate each other. They'll turn from the faith. And it just gets mean and nasty. And all of a sudden, Jesus goes, man, this church is lukewarm. I'm going to vomit it out of myself. So there's going to come a time, and next week we'll get into this a little bit more into the weeds. We'll lock in the hubs, get the mud terrains going. So this isn't our first installment of this tonight. We First installment, but we got more. So there's going to be this great turning away, and that's already started. Simultaneously, a great harvest will be happening before the rapture. The servants will be going out quickly to bring people into God's house churches. Yeah. Into God's house churches. Have no problem with a brick and mortar. Rah, rah, boom, boom, rah, rah. And, and all of a sudden on Saturday, we're, Sunday, we're celebrating what we did the other six days. No problem with that. But if all we're celebrating is that one service on Sunday... We're, we're toast. Yeah. Sell the building. Go give the money to Randy. <laughs> <laughs> and not to me, personally, last day's harvest. Yeah. I thought the other day, I, I'm reading about this church building a $140 million sanctuary. Yeah. And <laughs> it seats 2,600 people. The congregation's 11,000. And this is what I said to myself. Lord, give us a million and we'll win a billion. Mm -hmm. Now that wasn't arrogant. That's little childlike faith, Randy. I couldn't wrap my mind. You're going to spend up to $140 million for 2,600 seats. And your congregation's 11,000. Mm -hmm. I, you know, like I said, farm boy. <laughs> I, I just don't get it. But... When God gets ready to move and those other 600 people come in and those resources, you're going to see us go from 1.5 million in 28 days where we're at right now. Facebook puts this service in front of 1.5 million people every 28 days. You'll see that go to 3 million, 5 million, 10 million. And the size of our congregation can stay this size. That's yeah. right. That's right. This size. <clears throat> Jesus rocked the planet with 12 people. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Had to replace one. That guy got a little flaky. <laughs> yeah. 
wound up swinging somewhere <laughs> by a tree, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. He wasn't hanging around Jesus. He was hanging around somewhere else. Mm -hmm. right. All right, you get my point. All right. So there's this great harvest. Because guess what this camera is doing here in Chiloquin? It's going out quickly. It's going out quickly. To bring people into God's house churches. That pastor that just had his church burnt to the ground. If he calls us, we're going to give him a plan. Amen. He was trained by us. You have to have this. That's not biblical. He could have 10, 12 house churches. You can have your celebration outside. Get people saved. Mm -hmm. Disciple them in the homes. Mm -hmm. No overhead. Amen. 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 As the brick and mortars, now listen to this, as the brick and mortars are being burnt down physically, as the brick and mortars are being burnt down physically, now get this part, because this is what's happening in America. As the brick and mortars get burnt down physically, we just saw the testimony of that. This is the second part. As the brick and mortars get burnt down spiritually, Physically and spiritually, spiritually from apostasy and lukewarm leaders who compromise to win the approval of people. You're literally watching churches get burnt down in the spirit realm because the leader is trying to win the approval of the people. And the, they're in there worshiping, they're in there listening to teaching, and they don't even realize that place is burnt to the ground in the spirit realm. Because it doesn't please the Lord when we're preaching what our itching ears want to hear. That, that, that doesn't make the Lord happy. It doesn't mean we beat people down, but we at least try to motivate them. Right? Yeah. We who are sold out for Jesus will be caught up in the clouds with Jesus. The world will say the aliens took them, just like in the Marvel movies. <laughs> Iron Man, Spider Man, they got stuck on that ship, didn't make it back. The aliens took them. Isn't it ironic in the Marvel movies, there is a five year gap? Isn't it ironic in the Marvel movies, half the people disappear for five years. You know, if Jesus was preaching right now, he'd use the Marvel movie as a parable. Now, maybe not all y'all have watched that. But there's going to be people in Egypt and China know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, this will be a seven year gap where people will vanish and the visitors from heaven will show up. Isn't that cool? Is that in the Bible, Brad? I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're here. We're going we're gonna to look at the whole enchilada, maybe have some chips and salsa with them. All right. <laughs> It's funny because once we pass the third year, going into the fourth year in Chilliquin, you can just feel how happy God is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. How happy he is about what we're doing here. Yeah. I want God to be happy with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a seven-year gap where people are going to vanish and the visitors from heaven will show up and the population of the world who are left behind will hate these men. Not just a portion of the world. The Bible says the whole world, including the apostate church, including all the religions that are left behind, will hate these visitors from heaven. Is that in the Bible, Rand? I'm glad you came. Put your bib on. We'll even give you a doggy bag to go. Okay, let's look at some prophecy. 
So let's back up into 1 Thessalonians and take a look at the rapture. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Now, like I said, when I have a Christian come and say, Jesus ain't coming back in my lifetime, that bloodied my nose a little bit. Because we, we need to be expecting Him to come tomorrow. Yes. We need to be expecting because when we have expectancy, we reach people. Right. All of a sudden, Jackie says, you know what? No matter what, on Wednesday night, I'm going to be here to listen to the theologians. Right. Tear Randy's message apart. And I'm just being funny. But I'm just saying. Invite some people Wednesday. Say, hey, we're discussing these visitors from heaven. Invite some people. Like I said, if it gets too big, Judy can take some, Pete can take some. And uh, we got plenty of rooms in this building. Because you don't want it so big that somebody can't ask a question. So 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Here we go. 1 Thessalonians, not 2 Thessalonians. If you're in 2 Thessalonians, you're going to be looking at me like a calf staring at a new gate. 2 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. See, when people die, the rest of mankind is hopeless because yeah. there's nothing afterwards. So Paul is speaking to the Thessalonians here. Verse 14, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Verse 15, according to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, that's us, that's you and me, who are left until the coming of the Lord. Oh, we're special, <laughs> right? Who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, yeah. with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet call of God. Mm -hmm. The dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Now, we're going to add some more scripture to this. The world is not going to see this. We that are supposed to go, we're going to see this. We're going to see the Lord. But simultaneously as this is happening, I, I wouldn't doubt if it's the same day the two witnesses will show up yeah. in Israel. Yeah. I mean, it just yeah. boom, boom. We're up, they're down. We'll be giving them a high five on the way down. You know, we're going up, they're going, oh, we're going to go have some fun for three and a half years. Yeah. Wow. Is that in the Bible too, Randy? I'm glad you, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> All right. That's right, Jackie's with me. Now listen to this. The beauty of the house churches, the beauty of the house churches you can take this message and dissect it verse by verse. That's the beauty of the house church. That's the beauty of you coming here on Wednesday and together taking this apart verse by verse. And this will happen all over the world. All over the world this week. They're going to take this apart. That's why the Bible says those that teach will be judged twice as hard. Don't ever be afraid to teach the word because of that. Because many of you should be teachers by now. The Bible says that. Paul said, I didn't come with eloquence of speech. I didn't come with persuasive words. He goes, I was actually afraid and scared. 
but I came in the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If your motive is to touch people through your teaching, the Holy Spirit will do the rest. Amen? Amen. All right, where'd I go? So, you guys are going to dissect this message this week. That's a beautiful thing for me. Because many of you are going to check this out. And a lot of times that never happens with the people we're listening to minister to us. Well, they said it. That's what it means. I love that you guys tear these things apart. It holds me accountable, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Our brick and mortar message goes into hundreds of house churches where salvation and discipleship happens. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty of this message, people are going to get saved at the end, at the altar call in their homes. Mm -hmm. The discipleship will start happening immediately mm -hmm. in the homes. I know for my core here, our congregation, our core house churches, Randy, why do you keep saying the same thing over and over and over? Because hundreds and hundreds of people a month have never heard me say that. Right. So bear with us mm -hmm. as we're building the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm not saying it so much to irritate you or hear it again. I'm saying it because people are contacting us go, man, I just tuned in for the first time. Right. Yeah. So we've got to be repetitive. Yep. All right. Peter preached... This massive 3,000 people in one day get saved. That's a celebration service. It was way too big for discipleship. 3,000 people get saved. Where did the discipleship happen? House to house. We're not preaching against the church. We're just teaching the original wineskin. The largest denomination in the world built their first building in about 641 A.D. In over 1,300 years, they've only built 220,000 more locations in 1,300 years. A ministry last year, one ministry... 31 million people saved in 12 months using cell phones. Six million house churches in 12 months. Here's a brick and mortar denomination. Over 1,300 years, only 220,000 locations. Here's one ministry before the rapture. It tell you about speeding up. Six million and didn't spend a penny on sheetrock. It's in the Bible. It's just we've created 45,000 denominations. There's 45,000 Christian denominations. So as we divide it, look at my building, it's prettier. Look at my building, it's taller. Look at my building, it has colored glass in it. Look at my building, my building has a university now where we can equip and make people Bible college students. We've completely moved away from 3,000 saved, House to house. Mm -hmm. Now are those things bad? Not in themselves, they're not. But we remove ourselves, Mike and Sally, from the simplicity that this single mom and her daughter with no shoes on can open a house church today using our video.
Okay, let's look a little bit more at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 58. Now, what's awesome about having over 600 house churches that the majority of them study what we've preached every weekend. The beauty of that is as the Holy Spirit takes our church, Last Day's Harvest Ministries, in a direction, everybody's going the same direction. So like I said, if there's a house church that's not teaching what we teach on, that's okay, but at least go attend one that is. Because if this is your church, stay in step with what's being taught. All right, so 1 Corinthians, not 2 Corinthians, calf staring at Newgate. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50, 5, 0, through 58. A lot of verses in Corinthians here. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 58. And there's also four house churches in Klamath that study every week. So if you're in Klamath Falls, give us a ring and we'll show you one. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep. Oh, I love this part. But will be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound the dead in Christ raised to imperishable. We will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. You got to be careful when you're getting hung up on the temporal. You're designed for immortality. You're just passing through this life. Verse 54. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with the immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is to sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So there's this little gold nugget in here, this transformation in the twinkling of an eye. But what I focused on is the word flash. So I looked up the definition of flash and it means to give off light suddenly. So all of a sudden this trump's going to blow and there's going to be this flash of light and in a twinkling of an eye you're going to go from here to the clouds. That's quick. I think that's quicker than jumping jack flash. So I wrote here in my notes, okay, we're gone. That was just some appetizer to help you understand we're flying United, we're flying Dove Airlines, we're out of here. So as we're going, Sally and Mike, Randy, Deb, we're going up, we're high fiving the visitors. This makes it a lot simpler when you hear somebody say, oh, Jesus isn't coming back. You know, in a way, they're right. He's not coming back for you because you you're not looking for him. And you might wind up staying here and we'll be watching from up there. Now, let me tell you something. 
Those seven years for us will be like seconds. It'll be maybe minutes. But we'll be in glorified bodies and we'll be immortal. So it'll go by like that. You want some more? More. Okay, all right. So, I just want to make sure I wasn't boring, y'all. Okay, we're gone. Visitors from heaven show up to prophesy for the first three and a half years of the tribulation. If you see these guys on television or on your computer or on your cell phone, you've been left behind. See, we're going to help some people here. We're going to help some people here all over the world because if you see these two dudes that you think are out of a Marvel comic book or something, however you perceive them, because they're, they're going to have supernatural powers. And remember, every person on the planet is going to hate them. That, that's going to show you the condition when the elect are removed. There will still be churches on every corner. There will still be churches having Sunday morning. You'll have from pulpits on Sunday morning, people say, did you see the two guys in Israel preaching? They say, that is demonic. They will say from a pulpit in a church, that's an alien. That's not of God. Why does the Antichrist have to have a religious leader with him? The false prophet. When the Antichrist comes up, you think that guy's bad news, Leonard. This false prophet will be a religious leader that will intoxicate all the religions together. Yeah. You know, I wrote a couple books on this stuff, so it's coming back to my memory. Show up to prophesy for three and a half years, the first three and a half years of tribulation. You see these guys on your television or your computer or your cell phone, you've been left behind. So let's take a look at these heart attacks. Two trains in one night, man. We're doing good. So Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 through 12. See, a lot of people don't realize God used to walk with Adam and Eve in the cool of the evening. Satan was also in the garden. We go a couple thousand years later, we get around Job. Satan's in heaven. God said, Satan, what are you doing? He goes, I'm, I'm, I'm cruising the earth, man, looking for somebody to mess with. So God says, well, have you considered my servant Job? So now all of a sudden, now you got before Noah, you got angelic beings making babies with women of mankind. That's where the giants came from. That's why the flood came. And isn't it interesting that Jesus says, just like in the days of Noah, the rapture will happen. People were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. Everything was cool. The demons are making babies with humans, everything's fine until the door shut on the ark. That's right. That's right. The same way the sunny coming of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. The door will shut and it'll be too late. Then he says it'll be just like mm -hmm. Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. Because once judgment came, Lot's wife shouldn't have looked back. Oh, we're having fun tonight. Isn't the Bible cool? <clears throat> Revelation 11, 1 through 12. 
11, not 7. Revelation 11, 1 through 12. I was given a reed, a measuring rod, and was told, isn't it awesome in 96 AD? Here's John. Still alive. Exiled on Patmos. And he said, you know, on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. And all of a sudden, Jesus came down. And he fell like a dead man. And Jesus, like John, I need you to write a book for me. Several. The book of, John, the book of Revelation. This is John speaking here. I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar with its worshipers. But exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. Mm -hmm. And I will appoint my two witnesses. Here it comes. So we need to be encouraged that the first three and a half years of the tribulation, two powerhouses from heaven are going to come and start preaching. Not for a week revival or a two week revival. These dudes are going to be prophesying for three and a half years at the beginning of the tribulation. Oh, Jesus ain't coming back. Yeah, you won't know he's come back because you didn't fly up in the clouds, man. You're going to be sitting here cursing the aliens. Right. Those guys are aliens. I don't like what they're saying. We need to kill them right now. Well, let's see what happens when that happens. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Verse three. And I will appoint my two witnesses and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands. They stand before the Lord of the earth. Verse 5, if anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. Out to wow wow. Oh, yeah. Marvel Comics ain't got nothing on the Bible, man. Oh, it gets better. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. See, what we need to realize, there will be complete clarification during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. This will be on Fox News. This will be on MSNBC. This will be on people's cell phones. Real time. You know the Bible, Mike says, mankind will be without excuse. Yeah. Yeah. We're reading it right here. Mm -hmm. If anyone tries to harm them, verse 6, they have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. Three and a half years, no rain worldwide. Three and a half years, no rain worldwide. That's, that's something globally as well. Yeah. Are you guys getting this? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make it easy on Pete and Judy for Wednesday. You know, trying to try to explain a little bit of it. It's funny. I, 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 I see Judy's sister all the time at the gym, and she, she loves it when I mention Judy's name. They have power to shut up the heavens. So, Joanne. I said your name on worldwide television. Yeah. <laughs> You're famous now. So it will not rain during the time. How long are they going to be prophesying? Like, you guys are smart. And they have power to turn the waters into blood and strike the earth with every kind of plague often as they want. So now the fresh water that you do have has got blood in it. Sounds kind of Moses to me. Oh, That's what I was just but thinking. Sounds a little, hey, Mo! <laughs> so, okay, let's, 
Let me finish here. <laughs> Verse 7. Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. So Satan's going to be given permission to kill these two. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt. And this will give you the clarification where also the Lord was crucified. Okay. So we know that's in Jerusalem. These men are going to be killed publicly. I'll show you that the world will actually see this happen. The scripture tells us. So for three and a half days, some from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies. Now listen to that. For three and a half days, some from every people, every tribe, every language, every nation, will gaze on their bodies and say, we're not burying these dudes. They're going to lay here till they rocked. What was hard in the 30s and 40s was to preach this yeah. without television. It was very hard for prophecy teachers. How is the world? Are they all going to be standing there? They knew that couldn't happen. Well, guess what? We live in the time that somebody is going to have their cell phone and put that on TikTok. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. That, that's what they're going to be singing on TikTok. So now let's take it a little further here. Verse 10. The inhabitants of the earth. Oh boy. Now we went total Habitation. Mm -hmm. yeah. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate. <laughs> Not Jesus. <laughs> celebrate. Satan celebrate. Mm -hmm. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So look at, here's three and a half years. That's a long time. They'll sing gifts, and some prophetic teachers have said that might be around Christmas. Because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. Now, how are two men going to torment the earth without technology? This is all you will see on technology for three and a half years. That's right, Mark. That's right. But I'm just saying, there's going to be people watch this service and it's going to make them angry. It's going to make them frustrated. But guess what? When those two guys show up, they're going to remember what was said. Because right. the word will not return void. Right. All right. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them. They stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. Yeah. Terror. Yeah. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying, come up here. And they went to heaven in a cloud while the enemies looked on. So now you don't just have dudes coming down. Now you have a certain percentage of people watching them with their cell phone leave. That's right. <laughs> you guys are learning, aren't you? The greatest evangelism the world has ever seen is happening right now. Right now, the greatest harvest 
the world has ever seen, one ministry is getting someone saved every second. Mm -hmm. Just one. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, you've got to wake up, oh sleeper. That's right. You've got to wake up or you'll, you'll be caught off guard when the trump blows. Heaven is celebrating. Can you hear it? I think that's my next book. Heaven's Roar. I told Missy the other day, I said, see, when I write a book, it's like a little piece of wood. And it's just there. It's blank. And then the pencil comes out like a pocket knife. My last book I wrote in eight hours. About five, I started writing at six. Missy works in the office on Thursday nights. So when she went in the office, I sat down at the dining room table, started writing identity theft. So I'm writing, writing, writing. I write till 11 o'clock straight. And my eyes started burning and my finger was hurting because I write all my books with pencil and paper. And I, I was like, okay, this might be a good place to stop. And this is what the Lord said. You're finishing it in one setting. So at two o'clock in the morning, the next day, kink. And I got a feeling this next book will be like that too. But this time I'm gonna be ready to write for eight hours. <laughs> Have me a little bit of water or something. <laughs> Heaven is celebrating, can you hear it? The Bible says it. The Bible says when one is saved, all of heaven is celebrating. Right. So you need to realize right now, heaven is rocking. Yeah. Heaven is rocking. That's why when we come in here, we need to be excited. When you have a house church or you go to a house church, you need to come in there pumped up, excited. During the tribulation, there's going to be great distress. Heaven's going to be celebrating. The earth is going to be in great distress. But greater mercy from God, same time from the visitors from heaven. Because <clears throat> these guys are preaching during the tribulation. That's God's mercy. That's God coming down, warning all the inhabitants of the earth, warning the apostate church, right. warning all the people, repent. That's all you got to do. Repent. It says they'll chew their tongues off in their mouths while they curse God. Mm -hmm. Have you ever bit your tongue? Yes. <laughs> These people are going to be gnawing their tongues off while they curse God. Some people, well, Randy, I'm just going to be left behind. That's when I'll minister. No, 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 no. If you can't minister now, you definitely aren't going to be ministering then. Right. Leave on the first load. Yes. So here's all this mercy from God. Three and a half years. And guess what? There's more coming from heaven besides these two. Oh, that's for next week. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it is. That's for next week. Because I don't want to bore you or wear you out tonight because I know you're busy. I know you're busy. Now listen, this is what you really need to be attentive to is this last paragraph. Be careful the cares of this life will choke you out. The cares of this life will choke you out like a UFC fighter. Why aren't the 176 people that walk these aisles in here? Because the cares of this life have choked them out, Sam, like a UFC fighter. Yeah. 
and you will be unconscious when the trump blows and you will be left here in the cage on the mat. See what happens, somebody will walk forward and cry, their tears stain those pages in the Lamb's Book of Life. But for that moment, they yield. But once they walk back out the door, the cares of this life begin to choke them and they never make it back. Can you imagine if that 176 people were here tonight? Can you imagine if that 176 people then multiplied once? But I understand I live in a nation of the great falling away. And, and all I can do is say, do you want salvation? It's free. But then I also have to tell them, Leonard, discipleship will cost you your lifetime. Salvation's free. Discipleship will cost you time. Why have 600 plus house churches open? Why is Facebook contacting us saying, Randy, last 28 days we put this message in front of 1.5 million people? You know why? Because we're still here. We're still here. The 176 that haven't come back, that's on them. But look at what's happened, Sally and Mike, because we're still here. Hundreds of house churches, thousands of people being saved, millions being reached with the people that remain. Yes, thank you, Lord. But guess what happens when we quit? Guess what happens when we don't show up? The Bible says the blood's on your hands. So many of those people that haven't made it back that said, I want the salvation, they need to realize now you're accountable. So like I said, Wednesday night, 6 p.m. here at this building, Pete and Judy. Pete and Judy are gone. John and Deb. John and Deb, Pete and Judy, gone. Damn. And I have other victims, I mean teachers. <laughs> here. I love it when they say, man, you guys talk about the most serious stuff and you're always laughing. Well, that's because laughter is like good medicine. Amen? I think that's in the Bible too. All right, and we got four house churches in Klamath study this message every week. So if you're in Klamath, get a hold of them. So um, good time for an altar call. We know there's people watching this week. You've never heard the gospel. Boy, for your first message, you got a home ding. Amen. <laughs> UFC fighters getting choked out. People, fire coming out of people's mouths. What a way to get saved. You're awesome. Amen. So, like I always say, don't get saved to not go to hell. Get saved because someone loves you. Yeah. Jesus loves you. If you get scared, if you get saved out of fear, you'll always be afraid. If you get saved out of love, It'll never be taken away from you. So we're going to pray a prayer with you all over the world. Um, Romans 10, 9 says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. And the Bible says when you pray that prayer and you yield, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, comes to live inside of you. You actually become the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're a full meal deal, man. Man, woman, child, you can put a thumping on Satan. Day one. And see, that's hard for the Western church, but we've made it too complicated. You have the full authority of Christ to testify about the transformation that you just went through. And just keep it simple, farm boy style. Amen? So we're going to pray a prayer with you. Just repeat after me. 
Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, believe I believe that you hung on a cross, that you hung on a cross and that you died and, that you died and, paid, for my sins. and paid for my sins. Jesus, Jesus I, believe I believe that you rose again, that you rose again on the third day. On the third day. Jesus, Jesus, I ask you, I ask you into my heart. As my Lord and Savior. Lord and Savior. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Amen. 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 Now I got a couple more things to share with you. Put the heart emoji on our Facebook page if you're opening a house church or you already have, because we want to be praying for you. And um, use the video, use the altar call, and have a discussion. Um, it's it's that simple. That's why our church is just seeing hundreds and hundreds of house churches opening. And I think we're just getting started. So um, just realize the original wineskin in the Bible was the house churches. People getting saved, ministering, and they just passed on what they learned from the letters, the things that were being written. The Bible wasn't even put together until around... 15 to 1600 AD. It was just through word of mouth and teaching. And so your phone has the Bible in your language on it. Um, there's multiple Bible studies in your language. But if you can use our video and translate or use it for people to get saved, go for it. We still have people contact us. Okay, if we use the video, <clears throat> use the video. We love you. We want you to use it. So we're praying for you this week. Have an awesome week, and we'll see you next week.